It is great to have everyone with us and let us uh, take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Our service of morning prayer, right two, begins on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer or page two of your bulletin. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Continuing now on page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The Venite can be found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 82, or page 3 of your bulletin. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm uh, 78, verses 1 through 7 can be found in, book in, on the book, in, the, in the Book of Common Prayer on page 694. Please uh, help me read it accordingly. Uh, hear, hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds in the power of the Lord. And the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel. Which he commanded them to teach their children. That the generations to come might know in the children yet unborn that they in their turn might tell it to their children. That the generations to come might know in the children yet unborn. I think I just read that, sorry. So that they might put their trust in God. And not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Glory to the, Glory Father, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Joshua 24 1, 3a, 14 through 25. It's found on page 4 of our bulletin. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long before your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nabor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the river, beyond the river, and led him through the God of Canaan and made his offspring many. <clears throat> Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. 
Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us here and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, <clears throat> You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. <clears throat> so Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lee, please join with me in reciting Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. From the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples and see that they remember his name is ex exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson today, from page five in our bulletin, is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter four, verses 13 to 18. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this, we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will be will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord Himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Canticle 19, the song of the redeemed can be found in uh, on your book of common prayer, page 94, or the bulletin, page 5. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done surpassing human understanding. Your ways are the ways of righteousness and truth, O kings of all ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? 
for you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Our third reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridemaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with, the, with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give, some, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they were, went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. And hopefully you all know the rest of this prayer, this wonderful prayer attributed to St. Francis. We've been saying this for now about eight months in our morning prayer services online, uh, and we'll be saying it here a little bit uh, later during the prayers. And this prayer, I hope, has become a part of us, and especially in these times as we, um, we go through all the dividedness of this nation, as we now have a declared winner of the elections, but of course that is going to be challenged. As we go through all of this, I think this prayer, and I hope this prayer, just lives deep inside of us. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Because that's what we need now out of anything in this country. Yes, we have a projected winner in the presidential race. And yes, that will be challenged. But what we do know in all of this is that our country is so divided right now. No matter how you look at it and no matter how the final uh, numbers come out, we will know, we do know that we are horribly divided. And that division is not good for us as individuals. It's not good for us as a, as a country. And it's definitely not, that division is not good for us as Christians. Yesterday, I had many of my friends who were very excited about the, the calling of, um, of Biden as uh, president. I also had many friends who uh, were not very excited and were worried. Some of my friends are crying tears of joy. Some of my friends are sad and upset. And as I said last or uh, four years ago, I stand with my friends. That's what we need to do in this time. We need to stand with our friends and know, you all, I hope, know, as your priest, I am here. I am here to listen. I'm here to cry together. I'm here to be joyous together. But I am here for you wherever you are in this time. I stand with my friends. So how, does, how do we move forward from this time? How are we going to heal as individuals, as a nation? It's not going to happen over dueling flags and increasing shouting across party lines or different sides of the street. 
Now more than ever, we need this prayer attributed to St. Francis, and we need this, our baptismal covenant. We need to come together around those. We need to be instruments of God's peace. We need to pray for those who we might see as enemies, and hopefully we can see them different than enemies. Hopefully we can see them as fellow Christians, as fellow humans, who might just have a different idea than we do, a different understanding than we do. But we are called to seek and serve Christ in all people. That's our baptismal covenant. We are called to look into everyone's heart and see Christ. So how are we going to do that? Maybe, just maybe, we can go back to the Old Testament, to Joshua. This wonderful uh, passage out of Joshua. Many people have a uh, uh, plaques up in their wall, in their in their houses, or anything with that wonderful word. Those wonderful words. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Maybe we need to remember who it is we're serving. That we're not serving any political candidate. We're not serving any political party. We're not polit- serving any part of this world. That we are serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What does it mean to say, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord? What does it mean to stand up in front of a community as we did as we were baptized or our families did as uh, we were infants, maybe at our baptism, and we might have done at our confirmation and say, yes, I believe. And to bring those baptismal covenants, that baptismal covenant into our hearts. How are we going to respect the dignity of every human being? How are we going to walk together with our neighbor who might differ in opinion from ours? And maybe even differ in action as well, because it goes much more than words. But we are called to walk together. We are called to make sure that the one that we are serving is the one that we pay homage to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in that, we are called to love. Just uh, a couple weeks ago, we heard about the two commandments, loving God and loving our neighbor. Right now, loving God has got to be far most on our hearts. Repairing or building or, or increasing that relationship with God. And then repairing or building or increasing that relationship with our neighbor. How are we going to do that? How are we going to sow love and extend pardon? How are we going to be, do our best to bring union together? How are we going to listen? Listen to those around us. Listen to, be, to, listen to hear them and then share in a way that we might be heard. Because the division is not going to work for us. It hasn't yet, and it never will. So how is it that we can come to know our Lord and Savior in a new way? And how can we bring that love? How can we bring that loving, liberating, and life-giving God out to the world? We know pretty clearly that our time is limited as humans, either our time individually. I mean, none of us live forever. And that's what we hear in our gospel today as the bridesmaids go out and some are prepared and some aren't. May we be prepared in whatever way that looks like. But may, as Christians, may we be prepared in knowing to who, knowing whom we serve. That's what Joshua was bringing to the Israelites. Joshua was making sure that they remembered that God who brought them out of Egypt that God who walked with them and their ancestors through the desert. And now we are called to remember God, the creator, but also God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and make sure that that is who we serve in these days. So today, may we remind ourselves that we live in a great, great country. And we want to build that country as strong as it can be. But even our country isn't as 
important as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So may we remember this day whom we are to serve. And may that be our Lord and Savior. So today, may we put away the gods of our past and choose this day to serve the Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now we have our uh, song of praise, and this one uh, from our own uh, Sharon, and uh, we will put that up right now. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, it's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, no, not just for some, but for Apostles Creed on page six of your bulletin or page 96 in your prayer book. Please recite along with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with Suffrages A, found on page 97, if you're following on the Book of Common Prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now the collect of the day. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for times of conflict. O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to comfort one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and a prayer for the whole human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer attributed to St. Francis can be found in your bulletin on page 8 or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 833. Let us recite this wonderful prayer together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 3, is found in your bulletin on page 9, or the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, especially Father Brian, our priest, deacons and lay ministers. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Today we lift up all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Feel free to unmute and lift up your petitions. For Bo, Brian and Chelsea, Christopher and Sherry. Safe travels for Ben and his family. And I just heard Alex Trebek passed away. Mm. So I lift him up. Yes. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Chris, Gerard Harden, Emily Fuller, Dennis Lane, Laura Jenkins and family, Peggy, Macy, Susan and Patrick Malone, Sandy Z, Jay, Christy, Baby Violet, Nancy Z, Dan B, Irene, Susie R, Sarah P, Carrie, Arlene, Derek, Megan and the Kalitska family, <clears throat> Debbie, I'm sorry, Debbie and Dave and family, Freddie, Michael L, Jen and family, Martha, Dave, Judy, Jane and family, Kim W and family. Our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners, and those in nursing facilities. Today we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, those in quarantine and their families. We pray for the firefighters, and all affected by the forest fires in Colorado and the West. We pray for rain and relief from the drought. And today we especially pray for our country in this divided time and after the elections. We pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end of the racism and hate that continues to infect and divide this country. We celebrate today with those who have birthdays this week. Christopher Reed, Trevor Hart, Alexandra Soraki, Mick Steffen, and Wayne Smolt. We also celebrate with those celebrating anniversaries. Brett James and Sarah Punzo James, Eric Zelt and Melissa Ball. At this time, you can feel free to lift up your thanksgivings. Family and friends, an opportunity to serve God and God's church. Holy and gracious God, we do lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, knowing that you are constantly doing more than we could ever ask or imagine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, everyone. I invite you to uh, share peace within your household. 
And then after the service or so, uh, text someone or reach out to them and share God's peace with them as well. Just a few uh, quick announcements. Um, obviously, uh, we have moved from outdoors uh, to back online, unfortunately, with our services rather than uh, indoors as we had hoped. Uh, we, are, we will be watching the numbers and keep everybody as safe as possible. And when it seems prudent, uh, we are ready to move indoors with small numbers and have prepared the sanctuary for that. But again, for now, for a few weeks at least, we'll be online as our numbers in Colorado continue to go, go up. Um, uh, today is a pledge uh, Sunday, if you will, and uh, pledge cards are due today. So if uh, hopefully you've got them all in. If not, um, we can send them in uh, still. We'll still take them um, and all. The sooner the better, obviously, as we start putting numbers together. Uh, we do have a great website about our stewardship program with videos on it and all that, and uh, just some wonderful videos of people sharing their life. Um, if, you, if you've forgotten how it is to have two young kids in the household, you got to watch the video that was sent out yesterday with uh, Bethany and Nick and all, and their two boys. Uh, a good reminder of what life is like with two little ones. But um, again, everything's on our website, including the pledge packet. So please uh, visit there. We also have uh, published our newest um, Alive magazine. And so that is out. Uh, we do have some printed copies at the office. If you need those, let us know and we can make sure we put one out on the door for you or so. But if you uh, would like to read it online, all that has been emailed out and the new uh, version is on our website as well with a great new viewer so you can flip through and look just like a magazine on your screen. So um, also uh, Oakwood, we are serving next week at Oakwood for Thanksgiving. So if you can help with that, uh, please contact Barbara Nickel and uh, we'll make sure that those people over at Oakwood uh, living in the middle of a construction zone at this time um, uh, still uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving meal. So uh, help us reach out to them. Also starting next uh, Thursday or this coming Thursday, um, we will be uh, starting our online coffee house hours again. Um, before all the COVID hit, I would be over at uh, Crowfoot uh, for open coffee house hours. And so now I'll be online. We did this a little bit ago as well online. But so Thursdays from 4.30 4 to 6 p.m., I'll be on, online on Zoom. It'll be on our webpage and all that. You can just join me there. We can talk. You can jump in for five minutes and say hi, or you can stay for the whole time whatever works, but I'll be available for any questions and also just for some conversation. And Trevor, I think you have an announcement for the readers or about readers. Yes, just wanted to thank everyone. Obviously what we're trying to do during these Zoom uh, morning prayers is have as many people as possible join in with the readings. I think it, I, I find it really helpful to feel a sense of community. I hope you do too. So thank you for those of you that have been my faithful readers um, and please continue to do that. Um, if I haven't called on you and you'd like to read, please email me and let me know. I'd love to expand the readers that we have. And for those of you that are kind of re regular readers, if for some reason you're gonna be away for a Sunday or for a couple of weeks, please let me know that makes the scheduling easier. But thank you so much for being willing to read. Yes, thank you all. All right, and now we have our general Thanksgiving. Pat. Please join me um, on page 101 of your Book of Common Prayer or page 10 of the bulletin. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness, and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son 
that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Be careful as you go out into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with one another, for you are the dwelling place of the Most High God. Be alert and hesitant, for sometimes God is but a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, everybody. God bless.